Good morning and welcome to the Morning Scoop for Monday, September 14th. This is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Moore. This could be it. This could be the day when the Big Ten presidents and chancellors finally vote to start the 2020 conference football season. That vote could happen as early as today. That season could start as early as October 17th. None of that is done, however. The presidents met with the return to play committee yesterday to hear the plans to get everyone back on the field. My guest today is Buckeye Scoop's ultimate insider, Nevada Buck. Nevada, what are you hearing right now in terms of what they talked about this this weekend and how those meetings went? Well, Tom, thanks for having me on. Um, you know, really kind of historic day. I mean, I, I, I guess before I get into that, let's take a step back just a couple of weeks ago. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, it was done. I mean, there, there was not going to be football. And you know, there, you know, there was a, you know, a a chance we wouldn't play till January. There wasn't a plan to, we wouldn't play till April. There, there was a, a very a lot of smart people thought we wouldn't play at all. And so here we sit on the verge of a uh, what I think is going to be a positive vote um, made public tomorrow, um, and just a kind of a historic historic turnaround of events. And, and really, the uh, the biggest story as far as I'm concerned in college football history, and you know, to have a major conference opt out, then change mind, opt back in, and bring back into play the you know, you know the likely Heisman Trophy winner, the likely national champion. Um, just so many different storylines. So, um, so no, I'm I'm as you can tell, I'm pumped. I'm excited. I I think today was a very good day uh, for people that want to see football back. I I think the uh, the you know, the medical subcommittee had, had done an excellent job of, of presenting to the steering committee and really laid out a case that was that was compelling as to why they could move forward. And, and the key is, was in their minds was the rapid testing. You know, rapid testing kind of solves a lot of issues in terms of you're not so worried about contract uh, contact tracing. You're not so worried about a lot of different things when you literally – have tests that you could you could test before a game you could test after the game i mean you know you know at, at five dollars a test and and readily available and results in 15 minutes um you could nip any any type of situation really in the bud and and i think that was really what uh what moved a lot of people along the uh along the continuum from not playing to being willing to play at least you know that's their uh that's their stated position that's the out that they have and and um i think we're going to have some very good news tomorrow yeah, and and just to be clear, the the vote you're seeing the vote happen on Monday or Tuesday. When when do you think that vote's actually going to happen? I think they'll make it. I think they. Uh, what I've heard is that they look on these votes. They know how people are going to vote. You can tell by pe- how people are talking and how people are going. You know the the information that I have is that this is this is going to happen. Whether that meant they, you know, counted heads, read the tea leaves, you know. T- Looked at the, the the magic eight ball, whatever they did. Um, I think they know they have the votes to start, and they've indicated as much to their broadcast partners. Um, and you know, th- things are, are definitely trending that way. And you know, w- one of the big indicators that you can always tell on something like that is, had there been, if if there's a seed of doubt remaining regarding whether the Big Ten was playing right now, you would have the usual people you know, screaming. What, Screaming that it would, you know, there's a chance it won't happen, or that things weren't didn't go well, or that people, and, and it's really odd that you're hearing none of that right now. So I think that speaks volumes, and that the, the big has, has been really consistent in terms of their messaging, in terms of using the same type of people as as mouthpiece for their messaging. And now you're not hearing those people that were saying no way we'll play, everybody's going to die. Now they're not saying anything, and I think that. That confirms for me. I, I have not been able to get it from my primary source. My primary source broke a big nugget on uh, on Saturday regarding um, you know you know this meeting today on Sunday and what what was going to happen on that. Um, but I have not been able to confirm it with that same primary source that that they've had the final vote. But I've heard it from a, a couple of different sources that that this is really we're just waiting for the uh, the the formal. Uh, recognition from the presidents and chancellors who had to go back today and t- you know, inform the board of trustees uh, and on what's a really uh, you know, pretty significant change in position. So, but I think it's just going to, I just think it's a matter of just being made public tomorrow. And get those, those I's dotted and those T's crossed with the presidents going back. I mean, that was, that was something that had come up as a potential concern with the August vote 
and was there a vote? Wasn't there a vote? Why did some people think there was a vote? Why didn't they think it? You know, one of the very popular theories was maybe these presidents hadn't gone back and really uh, gotten gotten the official uh, thumbs up or thumbs down from their board of trustees or, uh, you know, so, someone else that they might answer to as university presidents. You think that's a that's a possibility that that everyone wants to make sure those eyes are eyes are dotted and T's are crossed, uh, before, you know, today before before there's anything officially put down on paper. Well, I, I definitely think that's part of the equation. And, and just think about the dynamic today. You know, you're a president. Say you're a president from a school that voted to not play. Now you're being presented with evidence. Maybe some of it you're hearing for the first time, or that you're being formally presented with it for the first time. And now you're you're, you're talking about a schedule. You're talking about how quickly can you mobilize your team. You know, you need to go back to you know, to your AD, to your head football coach, um, you know, to your medical staff. To you know, there's a lot of people to talk about on this stuff and. Certainly, I think um, it, it, it was not surprising to me that they wouldn't have decided all that and given the thumbs up and decided to completely radically change course, you know, all in the scope of a few hours on a Sunday. So um, I, I think, you know, they're definitely going back. They're definitely talking to people. I would imagine the Board of Trustees are being, they're being consulted. And um, like I said, hopefully, you know, um, unless something weird happens, I, I really think tomorrow is going to be a good day for football fans uh, in general, for Ohio State fans in particular. Now, one of the things that's been kind of frustrating, I think, for people throughout this whole process is how inconsistent the news has been, where if you're talking to one group of people, you hear one thing. If you're talking to another group of people, you're hearing something else. You mentioned kind of the the people that have been uh, pretty consistently repeating the Big Ten's party line for the last few few months. They are all kind of on that sort of, yeah, it seems like there's some momentum there. Things are moving towards a season. That's, I think, what a lot of our folks are hearing as well. I mean, I, I talked to someone who's pretty uh, pretty closely affiliated with the Ohio State football program over the weekend, and the the percentage likelihood of something happening soon that number kept going up. It was like, okay, oh, well, I think it's I think it's this this likely to happen. Oh well, the next day, oh well, now now it's a little more likely to happen. You just everyone is sort of on the same page with this, which is, I think, to me more than anything else, more than, you know, any individual leak, the fact that there's just, there's no one out there right now who's saying, well, actually, here's why that's probably not going to happen. The, the, you know, the, the people who are kind of criticizing it are saying, well, would it, wouldn't it be better if the rapid result testing went to the general student body rather than all to football? It's like, you know, they're, they're coming up with reasons why maybe ethically they shouldn't do it, maybe. But rather than telling you that no, this is simply impossible. This this can't be done, you know. And and that's this is simply impossible is a much harder sell. After guess what? We all watched a bunch of football on Saturday, you know, throughout the weekend. I mean, that's this is football is very clearly happening from a middle school and and kids level to high school to different college conferences and the NFL and and so it's impossible to play football is is kind of becoming a harder sell. I think and and you're seeing that in in what you're hearing from people. No question. And I was remembering, you know, good news travels fast, but bad news travels faster. And if, if, if it was bad and you know, people know the difference, you know, people know the difference. And you know, if it was bad, if the messaging was bad, we'd, we'd all be aware of it right now. I decided, you know, I, I really, I, I've been trying to steel myself against getting optimistic about this um, because frankly, I thought for a while that this was a lost year and uh, it's been a lost year on a lot of different fronts, but I thought this was a lost year for college football. And um, maybe we found it. And, and sometimes, you know, I, you know, in, in, in every disaster, the seeds of some sort of you know, equal benefit. And, you know, this could bring back an Ohio State team, you know, even hungrier and even tougher and even more motivated to play. And, and uh, that'd be a, a really, uh, really scary thought for a lot of, of a lot of opponents, for sure. Well, let's let's just for a moment stipulate the fact that they have agreed that they can play and that October 17th is the start date. Let's just for the moment, just say, assume that those two things are done and, and settled and everyone's sort of in agreement. What else still needs to be hammered out? I mean, is it, is it you know, how many teams are going to get to agree? Is it the scheduling? Is it if some teams are going to play and some teams aren't going to play and what that does to the league? Like what, what still needs to get settled, do you think, in, you know, before, before they come out and have an, you know, a, a, an official schedule release part two for this fall ski, uh, season? 
Well, I think you hit the, the nail on the head right there. You know, the last going to be the whole opt in or opt out. You know, I, you know, will we have 14 teams? You know, I mean, that's that's a that's an open question right now. And I think there's optimism that there's going to be more teams than people would think. Uh, there's optimism that there may be a unanimous vote on this, but will everybody play? I don't know. You know, I I, I don't know. You know, if you're some of those 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 teams that, yeah, I've, I've always been of the belief that some teams just don't want to play this year. There's some coaches that would rather take another year off, you know, it's another year down in their contract. They can build their recruiting back up. Maybe they're rebuilding their program. Um, you know, maybe the local health officials are a little bit more stringent about things. So, uh, you know, I, I, I think it's really an open question whether or not we'll have that many teams. And so, it, you know, it sets off a whole domino effect of, you know, what, you know, can you set a schedule if you don't know how many teams, you know, how, do, you know, how do you balance it? What do you do? You know, how, you know, how do you work with, uh, with, you know, bye weeks? Well, one of the things that I had heard on Saturday, which was really the first time I'd ever heard this was you know, a, a nine week season, eight games. And that, you know, Wisconsin and Maryland were look, discussing having a first uh, a week one buy to buy, to get them one more week to prepare given the fact that they you know, both are recently in the midst of the shutdowns of their you know, either sports programs or campuses in some regard due to COVID. So um, I think you're going to see some of that, but it, as you can imagine, it's, uh, you know, complex issues that have, you know, a lot of different, uh, a lot of different layers and, and the big doesn't have a lot of time to, you know, to pull this together, but, you know, I think they're going to do it. And I think somebody had said in a, in an article one time, they, somebody just needs to say, we're doing it and then let's figure it out. And, I, I trust that they'll they'll do that and they'll start figuring things out on the fly and uh, we'll get ready for some football. Well, the, there's some question as to how this would impact certain Ohio State players. I mean, Wyatt Davis just opted out at the end of last week. And Sean Wade is, as of the last time we heard, not practicing with the team. He's down in Florida right now. So there are some pretty big names that are maybe maybe out, maybe not entirely all the way back in yet. So what do you, I mean, I, Kirk Barton had Wyatt Davis on his Scoop World Order podcast uh, at the end of last week and had some, uh, got it kind of straight from the horse's mouth on, on what, uh, what's going on with him. And it sure didn't sound like, you know, even though he had opted out, it sounded like it, the door was not completely closed to him potentially returning if, if the Buckeyes are, in fact, back on the field in, in uh, a month. Yeah, well, let's talk about Wyatt just for a second. I mean, Wyatt's big, I mean, the, the big motivator for him, frankly, was the opportunity to play for a national championship. And I think at the end of last week, you know, there's a lot of people questioning whether Ohio State was going to even have the opportunity to do that, given what was going on. And should that change as expected tomorrow, I would fully expect Wyatt to opt back in. Um, you know, from Sean Wade's perspective, you think about his – kind of inglorious exit from the Clemson game last year on the, the illegal hit on, on Trevor Lawrence. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I would expect to see him in uniform as well. You got to remember for these football players, they're playing for their teammates, you know, they're, they're playing for their buddies and Wyatt and Sean don't have the opportunity. They already went the opportunity to go to the NFL drafts. So they're not getting paid this year. So the question would be, are you going to sit in the sidelines? Are you going to play with your, your, your teammates, your best friends, and have a chance to go win that national championship. And by the way, improve your draft, draft stock and, and, and move along the line in terms of your career. I fully expect to see them. I, I, you know, obviously we haven't discussed fields, but that wouldn't be an issue. But I would fully expect Wade and, uh, and Wyatt Davis to both suit up for the Buckeyes, assuming we get, uh, we get good word here um, shortly. And uh, before I let you go, you are also uh, in – the uh, MC of our uh, Sunday night trivia contest, which is has been a lot of fun the last couple of weeks. Uh, you had n- round number two last night. How did that go? And uh, what did what did the winner get? The prizes have been pretty impressive for those. Well, the, the first first prize, I mean, it's really amazing. The first prize is a hundred dollars cash. And this week we threw in a hundred and forty dollar Nick Bosa autograph rookie card. Um, so, you know, we've had some, you know, fantastic prizes, you know, going along the way here and, and, uh, the trivia game, it, you know, it's web-based, you can play it on your phone. I, I, I literally, I played along with my, uh, my sons, we played along and I was on my, uh, on my couch watching the run up to, uh, uh, 
you know, Sunday Night Football on uh, on NBC. You know, the, the whole game lasts l- less than five minutes. It, it's really easy. The questions just pop up. You sign up an email. You don't need, you know, it doesn't cost anything. It's sign up with an email address, and it's really a lot of fun. And uh, um, I actually, I, actually I, I finished tenth this week. I finished tenth after finishing 107th last week. So I really made a made a strong comeback, and uh, you know, you're feeling pretty good. That to set a good tone for the week. Win cash, win valuable prizes. More importantly, can you beat our insiders? There's that's the real prize. So for, if people do want to try and beat our insiders, let people know how they can be a part of next week's trivia game. Well, we're gonna we'll come out with a link this week on. Uh, on you know, if you're a member, you'll see it on the board. If you're not a member, you'll see it at uh, on our Twitter page, and it's a free link. Just click on the link, enter an email address, and it, whatever username you want. I usually use Tom Orr. That's the name that I usually go by. <laughs> And um, you just put it on there, and then uh, it's it's bang, you're, you're you're ready to play. And then when when the game pops up next, it'll be next Sunday night at eight o'clock Eastern, eight p.m. Eastern time. And uh, less less than five minutes time, you can win some cash and some great prizes, and then free dinner. What's what's not to like? Sounds uh sounds like a pretty uh pretty easy choice to me. So uh, Nevada, <laughs> thank you for joining us, and. Uh, Boy, we have had a whole lot of memorable weeks here already at Buckeye Scoop, and uh, this one is starting to look like it might be a pretty exciting one. So if you have not joined our site yet, this seems like it might be a great time to do that. You can go to BuckeyeScoop.com and uh, join right there. Our team of insiders has been working overtime to bring you everything we're hearing, everything we're learning, and that will definitely not stop when the deal to play is done. You will get all of our incredible recruiting coverage, and maybe soon, hey, maybe some Ohio State football game coverage as well. You can find that all at BuckeyeScoop.com. Sign up right there. And uh, you can also find all of our great podcasts. We have 11 podcasts on our podcast network now covering everything from uh, general sports podcasts to Cleveland Indians podcasts to uh, recruiting podcasts, gambling podcasts, the Buckeye Weekly Show that I do with Tony Gerdeman. We have a little bit of uh, something for everyone there. So just go to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, SoundCloud, whatever, whatever your podcast app of choice is and search Buckeye Scoop. You can find all of our great shows there and just click on subscribe to uh, get those downloaded directly to your phone every time we drop a new episode. Also, please leave us a five-star rating and review that helps people find our shows as well. But thank you guys for listening. Hope to have some exciting news for you on tomorrow's show. We will talk to you then.